You're now watching the Danny Mac Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Welcome back to the Danny Mac Podcast on the Bet Rivers Podcast Network. Glad you're with me as we get set to preview Week 11's matchup for the Bears. Justin Fields expected back for the struggling Bears. You know the story with the Lions. They are out of the gate strong. It's 7-2. and two. Jared Goff having another terrific season. And with this Sunday's date at Ford Field, the topic, let's bring in a guy who spent the first 11 of his 18 NFL seasons in a Lions uniform, a member of their Ring of Honor, and also you can catch him on Sirius XM. He's their radio analyst. He is number 75, Lomas Brown. Big guy, thanks for the time. You told me in August the Lions deserved to be favored in the NFC North, and I didn't believe you, but right now there's nobody within sniffing distance of your guys. It's been fun there, huh? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And, you know, we've been through a whole bunch of years of misery, man. So to be going through this stretch that we've been going through for this young team, and that's what I have to emphasize still, this young team, for them to perform the way they've been performing throughout, not just this season, but how they ended ended last season and were able to carry it over into this season. And uh, another big thing that we a lot of people hadn't talked about is the continuity of that coaching staff, too. You know, anytime you can keep your coaching staff together, too, that just helps keep spreading that same message that you need to get out to those players. So I think that's been kind of underrated and kind of been under the radar, but I think that's been just as important as how they've been playing out on the field this year. And hopefully, man, hopefully health-wise, you know, we can overcome that and just keep getting guys healthy and continue to play at a high level. Uh, everybody has a different opinion on whether a loss can be good. Week seven, the Ravens kicked the Lions all over the field, 38 to six. Was that a good thing? Was it a wake up? Well, you know, I think they exposed some things and, and what you need is for teams to show you some of your weaknesses or show you the chink in your armor. And that's what Baltimore did, man. Baltimore showed us that you got to come out ready for these games. You know, Baltimore came out, bam, from the first. They came out physical. They came out the, dominating the line of scrimmage. And they were able to do whatever they wanted to do to us offensively. Um, we just didn't have any continuity continuity offensively on the offensive side of the ball and that hurt us so you got to give Baltimore all the credit in the world and turn around and give the Lions all the credit in the world that next week for for bouncing back from a bad loss like that because again we're talking about young players and as we know these seasons go through peaks and valleys so it was good that these guys kind of stayed the course and we're able to bounce back that next week and continues to continue to bounce back. The Lions give up a lot of points, but they defend the, the run very well among the best in the league, and that's what the Bears do best. What's going on defensively that that keeps them from keeping opponents from light? Even in wins, they are giving up 38 points, and I know Justin Herbert's a good player last week in San Diego, and they're potent, but... Why haven't the Lions been able to get to the quarterback more, force more turnovers, and keep their points allowed down? And that's the that's the the key right there is the quarterback getting the necessary pressure on the quarterback, but making sure it's continuous pressure on the quarterback, and it has to be at the right time. As you know, football is all about schemes, right? Everybody try to out scheme themselves. But it's also about the timing, when you use those schemes, when those schemes are successful. And you know it comes down to maybe five, six plays throughout the whole game. And we also know that most games are going to come down to the last two minutes. That's why you see every NFL team work on the two-minute drill. They did it when I was in the league, and they continue to do it because they know the game's going to come down to a two, you know, some type of two-minute drama. So that's the thing that's going on right now. And you can kind of see that. You can kind of see with these teams trying to out-scheme each other. But I just think from the standpoint of the Lions giving up uh, uh, big plays, 
And I just think it's just been because we hadn't gotten the consistent pressure on the quarterback. And when I say pressure, you have to be able to get these quarterbacks down. We're getting to the quarterbacks. We're getting pressure on them, but we're not getting them down. And that's what's going to have to happen. And even with Aiden Hutchinson, I just think it's just need to be the other guys that step up and really create that chaos that be able to get the quarterback on the ground. Lomas, you took me exactly where I wanted to go. Uh, The definition of pressures, I I need to have somebody from Next Gen Stats explain it to me because I'm encouraged (laughs) by Montez Sweat's arrival here, but he didn't make game-changing plays in the Bears' win against Carolina a week ago. And, you know, when you're getting paid $25 million a year now with the Bears – you got to knock that guy on his ass and change games like Miles Garrett does in Cleveland or TJ Watt does. Pressures pressures are like batted balls in play in baseball. It's nice to have them, but it's not what you sh- sign up for. No, you're exactly right. And you it's it's all about completing the play. And it's all about like you saying being able if you're an impact player and you're being paid like an impact player you have to make impact plays and that's getting the quarterback we all know yeah pressure but again what's going to happen and what you hope happened that with him creating all that pressure that the opposing offenses start to look at him maybe uh shift the line his way maybe leave a guy in to kind of chip him before they go out and they pass routes, maybe line the tight end and up over that side so you widen him out a little bit more. Maybe that'll help, you know, uh, draw attention to him. And like I said, with the Lions, these other guys, your other guys got to be able to win your one-on-one matchups. In the NFL, that's what it's all about. If you are going to be a good player, you got to win your one-on-one matchup. So if you got a guy over here getting a double team or the line that's sliding this way, then these other three guys or these other two guys on this other side, they got to be able to, like I said earlier, create chaos. And chaos, to me, is getting sacks. The Lions have kept Jared Goff pretty clean this year. The running game helps out. Uh, Two guys with the rookie, Jameer Gibbs and uh, David Montgomery, the Bears defection. It looks really good. The rookie tight end, Sam Laporta, is kicking ass. If I were to suggest to you the Bears don't get a sack this Sunday, um, do do you think that is... That's an easy prediction against this because the Bears don't get there, man. Their defensive line as a group last year only had 10 sacks, and they really aren't that much better except for recently with the pressures king (laughs) coming on board. (laughs) I'm I'm, I'm hoping that I don't have to fight with Bears fans again next week about about why you earn a $100 million contract, but I see it coming because your guys up front are really good. Yeah, man, we are. We, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to brag, but we are. We are good up front. And I'm telling you, these guys went into the season because I was at training camp almost every day. They went into the season. They were talking about this during training camp that they wanted to be the number one offensive line in the NFL. All of them to a man, Taylor Decker, Jonah Jackson, Panay Sewell, all of them, man, Big V, all of them, Frank Ragnow, all of them talked about this. And they're going out, and, man, they proved it this year, man. I know it's other lines in this league that get talked about, but I'm telling you, you got to talk about our line because even through injuries, even through all the, the line shifts that we've had, like you said, Jared's been clean. Our running game has been strong pretty much all game long. And I, this is my point I want to make. OMG, I don't know what you all were thinking about letting David Montgomery go. Now, I can say this. From the outside looking in, when when my first six years doing radio and us traveling and watching them, man, I knew he was a, 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 a back, a power back, that you had the gang tackle that could get those yards after contact. But what I didn't know Oh, my goodness, this dude is so shifty in in close spaces. And I didn't know that watching him all these years. 
And man, I'm being able to see this up close. And I don't know what you all were thinking about letting him go, but thank you because he is awesome. And you see when he missed games, you see how our offense didn't flourish. And I said it all year long. I said it from the beginning of the season. He is the cog. I said two people that can't miss time for the Lions would be Jared Goff and David Montgomery. And he missed time. We were able to win a game. We lost the game, too. But we were able to win the game when he was gone or two while he was gone. But our offense didn't get clicking until he returned. And you see what we could put up when we got him up in there. So it, it's just I, – I just thank you all from the, the bottom of our hearts, us in Detroit, we thank you all for David Montgomery. <laughs> you asked the same question Bears fans have been asking for 100 years. What are we thinking? Um, yeah, he's a tough dude. And you, you know how running backs are. They're like livestock. They're not valued in this league anymore. Four years of experience and out the door you go. It's unfortunate, but that's the, uh, that's the trade those guys chose. Um, tell me about Dan Campbell. Is he 21st century Mike Ditka? <laughs> you know what? I like that. I like that. I can see that. And, you know, of course, as you know, me and Dan played together for two years when we were with the Giants in 2000, 2001. So I, and I was in my 15th year. He was in his second year. You knew it was something different about him. You knew it. You just couldn't put your finger on it and say, oh, he's going to be a great coach one day, or he's going to do this. But you knew it was something different about this guy. And, man, I'm telling you, man, he is the guy for Detroit. You know, blue collar, hard working. Yeah, what the people want. He says the right things, and he's going to do the right things. And the thing I love about him is the players that we have here now, they don't ask why. He, if he tell them to do something, they just do it. They don't ask why. You know, if he say, run your head into that wall, after they run their head into the wall, then they're going to ask him, coach, why did you want me to do that? And that's the type of guys that you want, young, hungry guys. They don't care about the baggage that we carry, that the baggage that we hadn't won the playoff game since 91. We hadn't won the division title since 93. They don't care about all that. You know, they, they're focused on the here, the now, and where they're going. And he has the right coaching staff, which I said, this is the best coaching staff since I got here and drafted here in 85. And you know I went against the 85 Bears, the greatest defense ever. I don't care what nobody say. That is the greatest defense ever assembled, man. With all, uh, well, anyway, I just, I, 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 detract but I'm, I'm telling you man it's it's a wonderful thing we're enjoying it here um uh, and it's just gonna be great you said something when i we got this right <laughs> no that's something good you, you you reminded yeah. me of something you said this past summer of that 85 game uh and i mentioned the the wilbur marshall hit on joe ferguson and i think you said Woo! it was the only time you ever saw a guy knocked out before he hit the ground so yes man he was sleep his eyes was closed as he was going backwards man i had never seen that before in my life man and of course you know the great wilbur marshall that's my teammate you know university of florida alumnus and you know, love Wilbur the death, man. So, yeah, man, that's the first I've ever seen that before. Lomas, for you young Bears fans, or even old Bears fans, a teammate in Florida of not only Wilbur Marshall, a guy I think is the second best running back in Bears history, yes. Neil Anderson. He didn't have the Absolutely. versatility or career of Matt Forte, but God, could he get to the pile on in a quick minute, and he was one tough dude. And, you know, on a, on a personal level, when you're a 22, 23-year-old kid and you're drafted in the first round, you're going to go to the Detroit Lions and be glad you are where you are and you're in a great position, but you also have to accept as a young man, Thanksgivings will not be mine for, and you didn't know how long, but 11 years of it, and now you're in the radio booth and Thanksgivings are not yours. Uh, <laughs> Do, is that something you get used to? I would guess you got grandbabies by now and would love to be at home in the bosom of the family, but uh, that's not part of the gig when you're wearing Honolulu blue. 
Well, but but it's not bad because your bosom starts just a little later, just a couple of hours later. You know, you don't start right at midday because the game is at 1230, which is 30 minutes earlier. So they're thinking about us. You end the game about 330 or so. Maybe the game ends, you know, post-game interviews. I do a few of those. Maybe that's an hour or so after the game. Maybe probably about a 30-minute ride home after there. So that put me home, what, about six? I'm catching the second half of the uh, the Dallas game, Thanksgiving game going on, and I'm going to sit down to dinner. It wasn't bad. That was pretty much how it was when I was in the league. That's pretty much how it's been, like you said, since I've been broadcasting and been back connected with the Lions in this way. And it's a, it's a routine now, so you get used to it. And as the great Wayne Fonts used to tell us all the time, we were the very first game on Thanksgiving. He used to always emphasize that because he used to always emphasize Thanksgiving, but he used to always emphasize that we are the very first game that people are going to watch on Thanksgiving. So we have more of the nation's eyes on us than we would say any of the other games and stuff. So he always emphasized how what a tradition Thanksgiving Day was. So it just starts a little later. That's it. And nothing says Thanksgiving like watching Jerry Ball get the John Madden turkey leg. My man. That second game. My man. My man. <laughs> and, and, of course, I have to say, and, you know, Richard Denton, he ate a, a drumstick on, on my behalf before for one game, one of those Thanksgiving Day games. He had a pretty good game against me, one Thanksgiving Day game. So he kind of, him and Refrigerated Perry, I think both of them, they kind of shared it together and stuff. So, yeah, it wasn't good. You know, most of our memories in Chicago are bad ones on Thanksgiving. And I I think you were still with the Lions. One one that sticks out with me, it might have been after you you had taken off after 11 years. The Lions are just trying to kill the clock before halftime, leading 24 to nothing or something like that. And Barry Sanders takes off on a 55-yard touchdown run on a play just designed to kill a little time and let's go take a breather. Uh, boy, that was that was one of many Thanksgiving Day beatings, and Barry gave a few people some of those. Yeah, he did. He really did, man. It was great catching up with those guys. Last week was our alumni weekend. Had almost 100 alumni come in for the weekend. And you know, as I say, the older you get, the better you were. So, you know, I blocked two guys on one play and beat Barry to the end zone. So next year, it'll be three guys that I blocked. So, yeah, that's how it is when you get together with all the guys. So it's, it's always fun to do that. I, I hope Eric Kramer made the reunion. I visited with him a he month did. ago. Oh, fantastic. He, he is a great mental health advocate. He has worked so hard yes. at getting himself together, hasn't he? Yes, and he has the book out now. Now. So he's touring and doing the book. So he was in for alumni day. He's coming back here. I just, as a matter of fact, he just texted me yesterday. So we've been talking by text. So he's doing well. Things seem to be going great for him. And I'll say this too, just like I told Chicago, um, thank you for David Montgomery. I think them guys need to thank us for Eric Kramer, man, because I'm telling you, man, we did not want to lose him, man. That was like – that kind of ripped the soul out of our team, man, when we let, let him go, when he left to go to Chicago uh, via free agency, man. That was a big part of what we got because, like I say, that year, he's the guy that guided us to that one divisional win – I'm sorry, one playoff win – which was against the Dallas Cowboys. And for us to lose him that next year, it was huge. You know, he still holds the Bears' single-season passing record at 95 yes, with 3,800 yards. I think I think there's 10 guys in the league with that right now after 10. <laughs> <laughs> Lomas Brown, it is always a pleasure to talk football with you. Thanks so much. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to go the Lions' way on Sunday. Thanks for joining us. Have a great, great weekend and a great Thanksgiving. Take care. You too. That's Lomas Brown, number 75 of the Detroit Lions. Get extra value this football season with Bet Rivers Squares. You can win up to $10,000 in bonus money. Bet $10,000 in same game parlays with the squares icon to earn a square. In case you didn't notice, 
I've circled Detroit for this weekend. In case you didn't notice, last week in our Bet Rivers guest panel predictions, yours truly was a perfect 5 and 0. Oh. <laughs> follow me at Danny Mac show on Twitter and follow the Bet Rivers picks regularly so you can find out where I'm going. And if you're smart, you'll fade me. For everybody here at the Bat Rivers crew, that's Adam Delavitt, Baby Capone. My executive producer is Sam Michael. We thank Randy Merkin for all of his help. Same thing with Troy Mocker and Alex Pastor. I'll be back Monday. Thanks. I'm Mac.